I'm jockey Hayley Turner and I'm just about to meet up with jockey Tom Cannon. We're both Bet Goodwin ambassadors and we thought it would be quite fun to spend the day together and compare being a jump jockey and being a flat jockey. So I've just arrived here at Chris Gordon's yard. It's 7am and the first big difference I've noticed is how cold it is. Morning, Tom. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm good, yeah. Too bad. Good. How long did it take you to get here? Um, about just under an hour, yeah. I leave about an hour. I have to, have to stop and get a mandatory coffee on the way. Starbucks? Yeah, yeah, Starbucks, yeah. Other well, coffees are available. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could do it with them sponsoring me as well. How um, often do you come to Chris's yard? Uh, no, normally, like, what, uh, like, always once a week. Um, yeah. Sometimes twice when it's got horses at school, or um, if I'm racing down this way, try and like pop in. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, the, the, throughout throughout the years. Pull out around seven ish, and uh, I, I just tend to get here about ten to just so uh, Chris and Jenny obviously they're sorting the board out and uh, tell me what I'm riding. And normally I have to find a bit of tack, or someone puts in the right direction a bit of tack, and uh, tells you if your horse needs a boot or nose band or um, special pads which someone have, and then yeah. Start tacking up and there, uh, and then we pull out. So we're just after seven o'clock. Right this is unanswered prayers. He's a uh, he's not a bad old horse. He's 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 won this year. Won at Cheltenham this year in fences, and uh, he got a bit bogged down in the the mud the last time he ran at, at Newbury. He likes good ground, so uh, he's uh, yeah. Well, he might be having a little jump. I'm not sure. We'll find out in a minute. Going back to the beginning, like how did you, how did you get on into horse racing? Had you ridden ponies before, or? Yeah, so I, um, my mum's a riding instructor. She's got a riding school. So you as mum? Really? Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I didn't really have much choice in the matter. So yeah. she um, always had the ponies when I was younger, growing up. And then uh, they had like point to pointers down in the southeast, so had a, a bit of a hand in the racing. Um, she used to ride out for Guy Harwood and people like that, you know, back in the day. And uh, so always had racing on the TV and and, and yeah. had a few pointers kicking about and. As I progressed, I obviously, you know, going fast and jumping jumps appealed to me when I was younger, and uh, and so I, I I sort of started doing the pony racing after I'd done it, you know, all the eventing and stuff like that, and and gradually progressed onto, you know, riding out for racing yards, and and we when I was old enough, I got a point to pointer and uh, went from there really. If you, I mean, obviously you're always going to ride horses, but do you think it was the point to pointing that got you into jumping? If you'd been born a little bit smaller and hadn't grown so much do you think you might have been a flat jockey? Yeah like when I was younger I used to ride out for Amanda Perrett and I you know I really liked the flat racing um and then yeah the the, the point the point to pointing was uh was something that uh you know obviously appealed to us because it was you know I had more, probably a chance to do it myself you know we had the horse at home we could do it ourselves and um it was a great place for me to learn because I you know I, I did four seasons point to pointing before I went professional so I had a real gave me a real good grounding um, you know, you can make mistakes without anyone really uh, paying much attention. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and, and before that, I'd done a bit of pony racing, which was it only just started when I did it, so it wasn't it was neither here nor there. But it, it mm. gave you an experience of uh, you know, I suppose riding in races and uh, you know getting yeah. into the routine of it. So uh, do you think us yeah. flat jockeys have got it easy compared to you? Like oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can go away somewhere nice and hot in the winter for a start if you want to. Yeah, um, I probably would agree with you. I was yeah. in Dubai last weekend. Oh, there so you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where was um, I? Warwick. Yeah, Warwick's not quite as glamorous. <laughs> no. So who would you say has influenced you most in your career to 
to get where you are now? Uh, I'd say, obviously, my family helped me along the way. Like, my mum, um, you know, my grandmother, she, um, you know, sits at home and watches every race, criticises oh. me if I do like wrong. My nanny used to do that. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, yeah, those two, and, you know, they, they both, you know, got a lot of love and respect for horses, and they've sort of passed it on to me. And, Does your um, nana actually criticise you? Um, yeah, like, not, yeah, she would do. Um, yeah, you know, especially my mum says, you know, when they're watching a race sometimes, like, oh, why is he doing this, why is he doing that? But um, oh, it's, it's, it's only just it keeps her yeah. active, keeps her mind on the job anyway. My nanny uh, used to watch all of yeah. my races, but she's not from a racing background or knows anything about horses. And yeah. she's the sort of person that'd be like, you know, if you jumped out and you made the running, but you came last, she'd say, oh, you were doing ever so well for such a long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, she's it's yeah. more, more just... Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, she, she like, follows the racing and watches it, and uh, yeah, her, her body's not great, but her mind's still on it. Yeah, which, um, yeah <laughs> she can, uh, she, she knows what she's talking about anyway. But uh, no, other, other than that, um, like Chris always had a big influence on me. He got me going really. Um, you know, I had a winner from point to pointing. Yeah, and he then, said his first, your first winner was. Yeah, and then um, it was actually yeah. a, he had a horse and hands and heels race, and uh, I was lucky enough that he put me on it and it won, and that kind of got the ball rolling from there. So yeah. he's probably been. The main influence, if you know, it hadn't been for him, you know, I probably wouldn't have ridden my claim out and got going because it is yeah. it's tough to get going, you know. Oh, so you owe him big time, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's been, yeah, that. it's been, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably probably been uh, doing it for 15, coming here for you know nearly 15 years now. So uh, is there any jockeys that you you've looked up to as you've gone along, or have you I've just kind of picked the best bits out of? No, I think so when I'm obviously like growing up, obviously AP, I think is everyone's. Yeah, yeah you know, um, you know, everyone looks up to him just because he's so tough and was just like the man for so long really yeah um, but then I've, I've gone racing a lot with like the likes of Jamie Moore and uh, you know late Nashville people like that and you know you're sat in the car with them for a few hours a day you, you know you pick bits up off them you know they've yeah. been there and done that so um I, yeah. le I learn a lot from like I go racing with Rab Havlin and he'll he'll ring like John Gosden and he'll yeah. be on loudspeaker <laughs> and the way that they communicate with each other is just amazing and you actually yeah. learn a lot just just by yeah doing just by like being that. around people that are successful you you're always going to pick up bits along the way and uh, yeah. yeah I've been lucky obviously that uh, you know I've always been here and then you know associated with Alan Kings um, you know you, you're always learning in this game and if you can pick up bits and pieces. Um, here and there, it, it eventually gets into your head anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, what are your earliest memories of Cheltenham? Did you just, did you used to go yeah. there as a kid a no, lot? No, I, I wouldn't have gone to Cheltenham much. I think my earliest ra memories of racing would have probably, um, you know, mum would take us down to Fontwell and places like that. Oh, right, yeah. Because um, that was local to us and, and yeah. running between sort of the, the, in the middle there, you can, you can watch one fence and, and then you can run across the oh, other fence. Good, so that was yeah. good. And it was actually coincidence that my first winner for Chris was, was at Fontwell as well. So, oh, really? um, yeah, oh, yeah, so nice. um, yeah, yeah, it sort of brought it all back round. But yeah. no, I think my, my first memory probably of um, bigger racing was the Grand National more than anything. Oh, yeah. um, I think like horses like you know, Bobby Joe when he won, and like, I remember Paul Carberry sort of swinging from the rafters in the winner's enclosure, and then oh. um, like Red Marauder when he won in 2001 or whenever it was. Um, and it was a bit of a, a, a mud bath. I remember that quite well. How many goes in the Grand National have you had? I've had uh, I've had two, um, but I pulled back, pulled up both of them. Oh. I, I've had I've had a winner over the national fences. Oh really? Um, but but Gosh. just not in the national, yeah. So yeah, still it's, yeah, it's still, still time, nice. Though. Yeah, nice. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. I've had a few seconds around there as well. Just never actually uh, got round in the national, but uh, it's hard to get a ride in it. So uh, yeah, just I can getting <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah competitive. So how often do you ride out for Chris then? I come in here once a week, always once a week, um, mm. and then sometimes twice if you know he's got horses he wants to school, or if I'm racing sort of in this direction. Um, and then yeah, I always sort of try and tie riding out with sort of whichever direction I'm heading and going racing. Yeah. Um, especially the cost of fuel these days, it's not really oh, efficient God, it's to. A uh, yeah, you it? you can't really be going you know two hours out of your way and two hours back just for the sake of riding one lot. You know, it's, yeah. I try and always tie it in with where I'm going racing. So who else do you ride out for? So I go into Alec Chris's once a week. Um, How far twice. is that from home? So it's about an hour. Yeah. And then um, I go into Alan King's on a Monday. That's his school in the morning. So go in there. That's a, that's a bit further. That's about an hour and 15. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes we go in there another day, depending on what there is to school. Yeah. And then sort of filling the gaps then after. Um, going to like Toby Laws. He's, I ride a bit for him. He, he, he'd have me in occasionally. And then like say when I'm going racing, I might go into Newmarket. If I was at Huntingdon, school for Lucy Wadham or... If I'm down in the West Country, you might go to Tizard's. Um, keep busy then. Yeah, just keep busy. I mean, mm. so, you know, when you're going racing, you may as well make a day of it, I think. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. go in somewhere. Um, you know, 
the way the roads are now, you're actually better off getting up early and going and riding out because you're not going to get, if you leave when everyone else is leaving, you'll get stuck in traffic anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's just how it is. But no, I, I like to be busy and, uh, you know, kind of it, it, it is what you make of it. You, you kind of, you have to be riding out to sort of get rides, especially in jump racing, I think, and uh, schooling horses and, and you know, it definitely um, helps you get more rides and the more rides you get, the, the more chance you've got of winning, hopefully. I do find that's quite a big difference between the jump and the flat is that we ride out a lot as flat jockeys, but the trainers probably aren't as loyal to use you as like if you do the work and ride out, you get the rides, whereas it doesn't always happen that way. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's a, it, it, I think it just helps if you, if you put your face about, um, mm. you know, you, you're not guaranteed to necessarily ride. Every, every yard's got their jockeys, but if there's a chance of a spare when there's three meetings on, if, if you've shown your face, you know, you might get on it, and um, if you're on it, you might have a chance of winning. Mm. Um, that's the way you look at it. You always, uh, yeah. you always just that. That's what keeps you going. It's always that little hope, isn't it? Yeah, if exactly. you go, if you go somewhere for one ride, even if it's fifty to one, you've always got that little in your head. Even if it's got no chance, you always yeah. drive there, just hope. Oh, this, you know, it might win. It might run well, and or if it doesn't and it gets round, you've paid for your. Fee. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's your job at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, what do you reckon is the hardest part for you of being a jockey? Um, it's, say it's, it's a bit of a grind you know the, the driving like everyone says is a bit of a killer you, you know you sometimes you, you know you might be up driving to ride out and then driving further to go racing like today for instance I would have driven from mine which is Guildford an hour to get here um, ridden out two lots and then driving back to Plumpton again mm. and then back up and then tomorrow um, Ludlow so then to mine I would have tomorrow morning go to Alan King's to school first and then go on to Ludlow afterwards so you know it's 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 a, it's a long day um, and then yeah, I say the 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 the, the weight thing is uh, in the season. It's not quite as much of a hardship because obviously your weight's quite you know your your weight's generally good anyway. But the, the driving is probably the biggest killer. Um, and then yeah, the ups and downs. I think as you get older, you learn to deal with them better. Mm. You know, you, you never get too Definitely. high, you never get too low. Um, you know, things are going to go wrong, and and you know that, that you know that they're going to go wrong. So when you do, it's just yeah. part and parcel of the game, really. Yeah, that's a good attitude to have, but it's definitely something you learn as you get a bit older, isn't it? Yeah, I think kind of... you, you take it a bit to heart when you're younger, and you, you never really mm. see light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, mm. you think that everything's against you sometimes when things are going wrong, but uh, you know, when you've been in it a while and you've been through bad yeah. patches and come out the other side, you um you soon realise that you know if you're going through a bad patch, it's going to finish, and when you're going through a good patch, it's going to finish as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So it's, uh, it's just something that comes with experience. Like I say, the only thing that um, beats experience is more experience. So, yeah. yeah. And um, so I've always struggled with, not struggled, but plenty of injuries. How's yeah. that gone for you? Yeah, it's, uh, touch wood, I've been quite lucky, um, you know, with injuries. I have broken a few things. I've what have you broken? Um, collarbone, which is like, fairly standard for a jump jockey. Uh, I've broken my neck, which wasn't great, but it could have been worse. Yeah. Um, a couple of my legs a couple of times, like fibulars, which is neither here nor there. <laughs> Um, and then I did my my worst one that I had to have an, an operation on was uh, my knee. I got my knee, Ooh, um, yeah. and I just did all the di ligaments in there and, and broke the, 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 the joints that had to be operated on. Um, but yeah, no, touch wood on the whole, uh, you know, I've been good. You know, I've always tried to look after my body quite well. I, I know that's not everything, but, you know, I think it, it does help when you're, you're getting fools and stuff and mm. you're a bit more resilient. And uh, at the end of the day, it's the luck of the draw, you know and touch wood um you know i've been lucky but i've had a lot of injuries but um yeah, yeah. yeah i was gonna say yeah. that's i've, I've <laughs> yeah. had so i've i've broke my ankle twice i've broke my pelvis i've broke my collarbone mm. um what else i broke my back my t67 mm. eight nine and ten Money. and then i've done my i had my L3, I had to have surgery on that, and a head injury, that was the worst one. Uh, yeah, head injuries, you know, like obviously yeah. nowadays everyone's much more uh, on the ball with concussions and stuff, and yeah. you know, it's definitely a good thing because they're the, the ones that will knock you for six. Um, but yeah, I, th I think flat, the falls you get on the flat are, are generally worse because you don't really know they're coming. Yeah. You know, you suddenly might clip heels or a horse gets injured or you're know, in the stools and stuff, but you know, yeah. jumping when you're going to get a fall or um, get unseated. <laughs> nine times out of ten it's happening at a jump yeah and 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 it's the horses behind you that you know you have to watch out for if you, if you, if you, you know if a horse is falling and it falls with you to the ground you know generally you're you're falling it to the ground the from, yeah it breaks yeah. the fall yeah so sometimes your worst falls or your most awkward injuries are when you get unseated and you can't really see your landing yeah. or if a horse behind you you know obviously gallops over you which you can't help um so it's, it's different obviously we're getting more falls but i think the falls that you get are probably 
higher percentage of them are probably more um, mm. more damaging. Yeah. It's quite funny though between the jockeys. If if someone goes to the hospital and they've had, oh, I've broke my leg, I broke my arm, I broke my shoulder, mm. um, and then everyone's like, oh thank God, because yeah. as long as it's not your head yeah. and it's not your spine, it doesn't matter because you know you're going to mend whatever, isn't it? Yeah, so exactly. I think it's worse for my family watching at home. Um, you know, they see yeah, you down. They've or, got to wait for the yeah, try yeah. and get in touch with the race. I mean, I always go, I always try and get up as quickly as I can, and then mm. so they can see it on the TV. Um, yeah. But yeah, like it's just one of those things. It's the luck of the draw. You never know, um, you know, what's going to come around the corner. I've got heated socks, but they're burning my feet. Where's my horse? Have I got a horse? Is, is it coming? I'm not going to get too cocky. I'll probably fall off. Where's my horse? Here we go. This is service for you, isn't it? I feel like a right diva. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Do you have many fat jockeys ride out for you? No, I tell you, Tom Queedy's been in. He was desperate and he wanted me to sign him up as stable jockey last year. But I only had the two horses. <laughs> and um, I, I know Tom's been. Oh, Charlie Bishop would have come in. I think he rode one of ours in a jump show. But yeah, I think you're the only the third one. Yeah. You don't have any fat horses at the moment, do you? No, but you I have, haven't. But you have in the past. Have in the past. We've had about 25 winners, I think, on the flat, which yeah. you. Sadly, I've not ever ridden one of them. Do you not think that's now. something you should change? That'd be nice, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd like Maybe to. Maybe this year? God, wouldn't it be exciting? Yeah. I, I'd love some flat horses during the summer. So when you're giving the, the jockeys their orders, yeah. jump jockeys and flat jockeys, is there a difference? Do they, like, listen? I've got to turn my heated socks off because they're burning my feet. <laughs> 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 no, the thing is, nobody... Fairly, no one listens to me, whatever. So really? Generally go out and do their own thing. I can. I try and put my two bob in, so I sound important in front of the owners, but no, they just, <laughs> as soon as they're on the horse, off they've gone, and they, everyone just wings it. So we've done first lot, which is pretty straightforward. It's light now. Work morning. What's the usual routine? Yeah, we're a little, we're a little bit spoilt this morning because it's so cold, isn't it, and very frozen on the gallop. So normally we'd be three times on that gallop and go winging up on the Wednesday and on the Saturday where we go much faster. We go steady the first one um, and then step it up. So so on, we're going pretty quick upside on a normal Wednesday. But, um, you know, it's one of those things like today we'd normally have five lots and the lots of the first one's out at um, seven o'clock. And they're out for approximately an hour, I should think. And yeah. So we're finishing at half twelve at the moment, but something like that. And um, it's just continuous. The kids came, kids are out this morning at six o'clock, mucking them all out. Really? Yeah, they're keen. Is that, love that it. is keen. They get paid so well, these children now. Really? Yeah. So they got like the paper rounds. No. Six quid a week. No, exactly. No, it's, it's gone. <laughs> I wish it was six pounds a week. I'd have a very big house. Um, <laughs> But no, um, so no, it's, it's, it's a tough way of work, yeah. but a tough way of life, but it's a wonderful way of life. Yeah. Do you find though, like in races, on the flat, comparing it to the jumps, do things, are things more likely to go wrong on the flat or on the jumps? Like for me, in the flat, it's like you might jump slow or they might go too slow in the race. But then I suppose over jumps, you've got fallers and... Uh, well, I think at the end of the day, sometimes on the flat, you go to somewhere, you know, we've had the odd sprinter and things, and the, the race seems to be over very quickly sometimes. You know, you fall out yeah. the stalls, they go a furlong, you're, you're trapped in or whatever. It just seems to be sometimes you're done and dusted, you might as well just go back to the bar halfway through the race. <laughs> but with a jumps race, you always feel you've got the time, they might make a mistake once or twice early and get back into a rhythm, yeah. and obviously uh, you've got a bit more time to sort things out. Yeah, so. I think, yeah, because I always find, like, like you say, sprint races, if one thing goes wrong, it's you know right off. But if you if we ride over two miles on soft ground, and you kind of half lose your posse, you can you can kind of recover. Yeah, exactly. Who's your favourite flat jockey? Frankie de Tori. Do you know what? I must <laughs> just say while we're here, I've used Frankie de Tori twice. Yeah. The first time he ever rode for us was for one of my owners, Les Gilbert, and he was fantastic. And he came in the paddock, 
and he made them feel so special. And he put really? them, yeah, he's put some arms around them, and and they some, they had a great time. Yeah. It was a very memorable day for them. The other time he rode for us was absolutely awful. He came out into the paddock. He was a chippy little angry man, right. and um, <laughs> completely different. So luckily, yeah. I've I've used him twice because the first time wonderful, the second time. Awful. Get away, you dirty little man. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's, how, that's how it felt. But no, um, oh, we've got, obviously he's wonderful to watch. He's a wonderful race. I love watching Ryan Moore because obviously knowing Gary, Josh, Jamie and Hayley well. And, um, yeah. and do you know what? For me, locally, you know, I love watching Charlie and, 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 you, and yourself, you know. Yeah. You're great ambassadors for racing. Favourite jump jockey? Tom Cannon. <laughs> uh, you know, Are you from, saying that just because he's spo uh, he's uh, ambassador to Bet Goodwin, or is he like genuine? Yeah, Tom to Murray, his very first winner under rules was was for us. Really? Yeah. So he's How been, long ago was that? Oh God, he was a spotty eighteen year old, I think, <laughs> and now he's a spotty thirty one year old. So, um, <laughs> so no, he's um, oh, he's mm. great. Tom Tom is brilliant. You know, and nowadays because he's ridden a great, you know, he's riding, riding Edward Stone, and so. People yeah. will suddenly go, oh, he's a good jockey, that Tom Gannon. Tom's always, always, been, been, a, a good, always been a very good jockey. Yeah. And because he rides very, very short, people say he's a jockey, he's not a horseman. But Tom's the most yeah. wonderful horseman. If you go and if you say, right, let's go cross country to Winchester now, he'd be, he'd be fantastic yeah. at that. Yep. He'd, he'd do show jumping. He's, you know, he's, he's been taught properly, Tom. Yeah. But, but apart from Tom, the great Davy Russell. Do you know, who retired and he came back. And I was so excited the other day when he came back. <laughs> and I've tried to he ask... He came him. out of retirement quicker than I did. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I've, I keep asking him, and last year I asked him a couple of times, please, one day at Plumpton or Fontwell, just the one day, yeah. we'll fly you over. And uh, he won't. He might make another comeback. Do you never know. Yeah. You never know. Best horse you've ridden? Yeah, he's the he's the best by a long way. Yeah, he's um he's he's top of the game at the moment. Um, you know, he's he's probably the well he's up there one of the best two milers in the country at the moment. And uh, yeah, he's a, he's a he's a pleasure to ride and be associated with. Is he easy to ride? So obviously some horses need cover, some need dropping out, some like to be in front with you know no horses around them. Has he got any complications in the race? Yeah, he, he can be quite headstrong. Um, he needs yeah. to he need, need to settle him. So we always try and ride him with a bit of cover, um, and then go from there. Really, yeah. um, doesn't have to be dropped out last. Just just needs a bit of a lead early on. Strong pace would help. Yeah, strong pace, but it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. Um, you know, he's got a good turn of foot, and yeah. he seems to see out the two miles quite well. So, you know, he's quite versatile in that sense. Um, but I think any horse you're on, you always like a strong pace to, to run at wherever you are. Mm. It doesn't matter what yeah, the race is. Yeah, that's so true. Um, but yeah, no, a strong pace would help, but it would help other horses as well. But he's uh, he's got a good turn of foot and, uh, you know, on the whole he jumps very well as well. What, what would you, if you could, like, put, put the ground down yourself, how would you have it? The ground? Yeah, for him, perfect. Just, just good, good, soft in places probably, good. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, n n not, nothing too quick, nothing too soft, but again, he's quite yeah. versed on that front as well. He's a, he's a very clean-winded horse and, you know, he seems to see out the two miles well, so... Do you, do you feel a bit of pressure when you go into, the, obviously, big race, big day, like everybody's going to be hyping him up and, you know, you're getting interviewed about him left, right and centre <laughs> and it just makes it sort of, you know, do you feel more nervous for that? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, obviously uh, the reason why you make the sacrifices you do and, you know, you put in a time and effort and you're going to the gym after you've been racing and you're not drinking and you're, you're eating healthy is for the big days like that. So, uh, you know, I kind of try and look forward to it as best I can. You know, I've not been making a sacrifice that I've made in my life for, to sort of not enjoy those moments. So, yeah. you know, last year when I rode him and he was really on a crest of a wave, I just made sure that I could enjoy it. And, and, uh, and I was lucky that it was a very good season. He had, you know, five wins. Um, you know, obviously he got brought down first time out, but after that he, he, he won. And by the time we got to Cheltenham last year, um, you know, we're really riding high, so just mm. it was, it just could enjoy the day. He had nothing more to prove, yeah. and uh, I was just able to enjoy it. And I think the day before as well, I'd, I'd had a winner at Plumpton, and you know, it might not sound much for someone looking from the outside, like oh, why would a winner Helps. at Plumpton? But it, it does help. Yeah. Me. Um, 
you know yeah. so and, and then this year the same you know he, he went to tingle creek there was no pressure on me from the owners or from um you know alan king which which does help as well you know there's, there's never been any pressure on me as a rider um i've always been able to sort of ride him um off instinct and to be able to ride him how i like to ride him and it does definitely help he seems to have quite a good instinct himself so when I watched you ride him in the Arkle and the horse fell in front of you and I think AP described it as a Patrick Swayze move the yeah. way he danced around the faller in front of him he was very agile and athletic is yeah. I mean do you find that with every race horse you ride or is he a bit special I think he learned the hard way I mean he got brought down first time out last year over fences at Warwick and when one fell not even directly in front of him it fell to the side and, and he just galloped straight into it and got brought down so yeah. he obviously learned his lesson by the time Cheltenham came round and yeah. uh, he wasn't going to let it happen again so uh, yeah he, he learned his lesson the hard way there um but yeah obviously he, he's he's, a, he's an agile athletic horse and you know that's why he's able to hold his own in those you know competitive two mile races so the build up to Cheltenham you're going to be in early every night watching EastEnders no <laughs> booze <laughs> strict diet that yeah, sort of thing t- to be fair like, I, I'm the same for all races really um, yeah. you know whether it's Cheltenham or whether it's uh, Plumpton or Monday or wherever it is you know I think when you're in the the middle of the season especially as a jump jockey that's when you've only really got sort of five or six months of the year to to make a living for the rest of the year mm. um you know in, in the summer we're relatively quiet so unless you're giving it 110 percent during the winter months you know that's where you you know you you, you pay your bills and, and and you make your sort of career really so yeah I, i'm i'm quite um dedicated anyway um it doesn't really matter where where the racing yeah. is i don't try and drink and uh, you know i'm I, I haven't really got much of a life away from racing, so yeah. is that, I'm in quite early <laughs> well, anyway. Well, that's, that's how you have to do it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's, no, it's difficult to, to mix it up. And I did notice that this weekend you're riding in a grade one, and that you don't have any rides in the races before. Is that something you've done deliberately? or you just No, it wants me. No, it wants me, no. I'd always ride um, you know, in, in the races before. The, the only thing that would put me off is if, if a horse had a light weight beforehand um, yeah. or after that, you know, I know, I know my limits with my weight and you know I, if, if a horse had a light weight to do and I had to sort of you know you know do a light weight before I had a big ride I'd probably turn it down but if it was a horse that I normally ride and um, it had a you know and, and it was a, for a yard that I'm associated with I would feel obliged to ride it you know, yeah. regardless of you know what I was riding afterwards. Very professional. <laughs> <laughs> jockey you obviously spend most of your life in the car I reckon I spend more time in my car than I do my house sometimes oh yeah definitely this is like a second home stroke office stroke everything you're, you know I'm in this from five in the morning well when I get up five in the morning till you know sometimes seven in the after, in the evening so uh, yeah. I think about doing about 60,000 miles a year you know 60,000 yeah, about that wow. yeah, so. A lot, of, a lot of driving and uh, yeah, it's your home from home really. You're just getting in the car and yeah, you, you know, you know, you know the roads in Britain and uh, where to stop to get a coffee and uh, where to, yeah, yeah, you, you, you know, every, all the coffees are available. Yeah, you know everywhere to go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, like from the minute you get in the car really. So I'm pretty lucky with my weight, so I can do bottom weight easy peasy really. I mean, I might have to if I, you know, I might have to be careful that few days before but nothing serious like it I never really had to sweat or um, starve myself it's I mean how bad is it for you yeah it's something I have to keep on top of um, it's uh, again it's another thing that you get better with the, as you get older you learn what you can do with your body and what you can't and what works for mm. you and what doesn't I mean there's no um, hard and fast thing that you know that you get told to do something by somebody that works for them and you know something else might work for you but I'm the main thing is just to be disciplined with it. Um, I try not to have breakfast in the mornings, or I don't normally have breakfast. I'd have a coffee riding out. Um, would ride out, go racing. Probably wouldn't eat much. Maybe just like snack something around lunchtime, um, or maybe another coffee or something. And then I always have a meal in the evenings. Um, and then yeah, so just just do it that way and just be quite disciplined in that regard. When there were saunas at the race courses, I used to be able to sweat and. Um, you know, we take a lot of weight off every day, um, but obviously now that that's changed a bit, and uh, everyone's probably got slightly bigger. We had the weight allowance during COVID, and everyone's body sort of adapted to that. And I'm probably just a bit heavier than I used to be, um, and a bit older. And I, I'm quite happy with where I'm sat at, sat at with my weight. I mean, as long as I get up every day do about ten. Do you get 10, moody, so. or do you just um, get quiet? No, probably yeah, a bit quiet. I mean, 
I think if you're just if you keep on top of it every day, you never probably get the big fluctuations in weight, and that's when you can get you know mm. get, you get a bit more grumpy about the yeah. whole thing. Um, but obviously, sometimes it can't be helped. You know, especially in the summer if you've had five or six days of no racing, um, and then you've suddenly got a um, you know not a lightweight but a weight that you know you're expected to do. Um, you know, you, you might have to have a bit of a sweat then, or you know, get on the exercise bike with a sweatsuit on and and, and that sort of thing. But every time I go racing, I always run around the track with a sweatsuit on anyway. Do you? Yeah, just every time. Well, I think two reasons mainly because you're sat in the car for a long time driving there, so it kind of gets you out in the open. Two, you're not looking at your phone because that's when you're sat in the rain, you know what it's like, you always got the look yeah. at your phone. And then also, you especially for jumping, you can see the layout of the track, um, see sometimes the ground might be better, you know, down the inner, down the outer. Um, you know some courses where the hurdles go from the inside to the outside or fences inside to outside you can sort of see where you might be able to be better off being down the inner and cutting the corner or you might be better off swinging off wide to get a better run to it or you know little things like yeah. that which... can you power nap no never really? can't sleep in a see, car I'm no. really good at that no no I couldn't even if I was absolutely um, you know yeah. tired and wanted to sleep I, I, I can't very rarely would sleep in someone's car and, oh. and I'd never sleep at the races that's no. I remember talking to Paul Hannigan when he was champion jockey and he had a driver that I said oh at least you can sleep in the car and obviously we were doing two meetings a day as well as riding mm. out then and he could never have a power nap at any point of the day and I, I mean I lived off them yeah like 10 <laughs> minutes and I'm, I'm like a brand new person so what's your favorite track to ride um <laughs> the ones that aren't too far away from yeah. where I live yeah <laughs> uh, no I, I like um I, obviously I've always had a lot of success around um, Plumpton and Fultwell. Um, they're not too far either, but like Huntingdon, um, Ludlow, um, Sandown's a nice course. But it, it varies, you might, have a, you might have a season where you might ride a few winners at a random track that you don't go to that often, and you might have a season where there's a track you're riding at every day of the week where you just can't for love and the money ride a winner. Um, but it, it all flips around, you know, yeah, it's just, that's just the nature of them racing itself. But. You know, like a jockey that might not be on a good horse, but they ride them so hard that they, you know they're going to get you into the straight. Are you like that in a jump race as well? Yeah, something? definitely. I think when you're riding all the time, you pick up signals off other horses and, and especially off other jockeys that you're following in a race. Um, it's just one of those, you know. Some one of them of, are unpredictable and they're the hardest ones yeah. to ride with, aren't they? Yeah, it's hard. And, yeah. and like, it's jumping as well you've got to take into consideration what happens at the start so you know it's not like starting stools where you're walking where you, you you're drawn badly you're drawn badly there's nothing you can do about it mm. whereas jumping you know if you're say you know you've got front row and you might have second row say if you're lined up second row you're putting your trust in the people in front of you yeah. that they are going to go forward so if someone that says they're going to go forward and you're meant to be handy and they take a pull they've then put you out of the race really mm -hmm. so that's another big part of it you know more so jumping um you know, you learn who to follow, who to trust, if to take someone's word for it or, or not to take someone's word for it. In the weighing room, like on the flat, the you have your valet, obviously, and they tend to put you in sort of order, mm. usually age. I don't know if it's the same <clears> for jumps, but do you have someone that you always sit next to? Yeah, so it's, it's it's the same for um, jumping, obviously. Your val you, you sit with the people that are done by the same valets as you. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it is age. I always say that the older you get, the closer to the door you get. Um, yeah. So you gradually shuffle up. I was next to Frankie last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, a flipping, that's a sign, isn't it? Yeah, you're getting on the door. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm next.